And we ask for your presence. We thank you for your mercies and your loving kindness. We ask for that you to direct my mind. Thank you for being for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. Third John 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even what? As thy soul prospereth. The Bible says he causeth the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of man. God causes the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of man. Now, there are a lot of terrible diseases that, that I've encountered, and I'm sure some of you have encountered. I've encountered everything from cancer to diabetes to oh, high blood pressure, brain tumors, you name it. Uh, there's a lot of people who have a lot of issues. And some of these issues are, are hard because the bodies have been broken down over time. The body can take a lot of abuse. Uh, and, and, um, and a lot of times sickness is already there. It's just subclinical. It's not showing up in the tests. But just understand that if we are violating the laws of health on a consistent basis, you already have issues that will be going on subclinically that may not show up in a blood test yet, but they're going on. So when we, you don't just end up out of the blue with diabetes. You don't just end up out of the blue with high blood pressure, hypertension, or cancer. It didn't, it didn't happen like that. Uh, it's normally a process that goes on. But remember, too, nine-tenths of all diseases have their origin in the mind. Not that they're in the mind. They have their origin in the mind. Stress, anxiety, you know, all these different things. Uh, Ministry of Healing, the Spirit of Prophecy, talks about how uh, these emotions eat away at the life forces. And it manifests. It may manifest as cancer. It may manifest as some other disease. The, some of these that we're dealing with are some of the easier ones, uh, because this presentation was more so meant to deal with those types of things as opposed to long-term standing diseases, which um, that can be dealt with, too. How many of you ever had a toothache or abscess? Listen, it's not a disease. Well, you could have, you know, periodontal disease, but a toothache can make a grown man cry. Amen? A, a toothache can cause real problems. It can cause real problems. Um, now, I'll start off with, with you know, we kind of progress. Some of you have heard of oil pulling, yes? Here I have oil pulling or swishing coconut or sesame oil. Sometimes some people combine them in the mouth for 10 to 15 minutes. helps relieve tooth pain. It, it does other things as well. But it helps improve your gum health overall. Um, and normally you need to do it, like say, 15 to 20 minutes in the morning, and maybe you don't spit it down your, uh, your sink, spit it in the toilet, because the oil can cause problems in your plumbing system. Uh, but this is one of the things that can help with toothache pain. Another thing is one of my favorite, activated charcoal. And sometimes I'll, I would combine it for a toothache. I would combine uh, maybe flaxseed, um, Maybe um, cyprian bark as well, which, and normally what will, which, what will happen if you have a toothache, uh, if it's not an abscess, and even if it had with an abscess, we'll deal with that in a second, but when you have that toothache, if you take that, that activated charcoal, mix a little water with it, if you have flax seeds, blend them up into a powder, and if you have, you can just do those two, but slippery elm bark will also help as well. Slippery elm bark is also very, very good if you have any type of gastrointestinal problems. Uh, so, and you mix it, and when, once you put that on there, typically what will happen, if, if you have throbbing going on, the throbbing will begin to get less and less, and less and less, and typically it will, it will go away. Now, of course, you need to find out what's the underlying cause. Is it a cavity or what's going on? Why do you have the, the, the tooth issue? You may need to go to the dentist and find out what's going on. But most people, when, they have, when they're having a toothache, they just want the pain gone then. And this is what this is for. 
Activated charcoal powder used as a potent against uh, sore tooth brings relief by drawing out infection and by relieving pain. Now, vitamin C, we're going to be talking about that more, too. If you, have a tooth, if you have tooth pain caused by infection, vitamin C as a supplement to other remedies or as a standalone remedy can help. That's, that's more helping the underlying cause. But remember, ultimately, you want to deal with the underlying cause because the infection and the inflammation is what's causing the pain. Also, thieves oil. Who's ever heard of thieves oil? I had an issue where I had a, a filling that I had for probably 20 years. Yeah, it, it, it just fell out, which is probably good because it was probably mercury-based. And I think something got down in there, and I woke up one night in the middle of the night, and my mouth was, was hurting me pretty good. And it, was, I, it felt very warm, so that told me that infection was setting in. So I had some thieves oil. I dropped maybe a couple of drops right down into the area. And of course, of course thieves oil has clothes in it, because clothes immediately numbs it. And, but you also, have, you also have other constituents in it to help deal with the infection. I did that a couple of days, and psh, gone. No more infection. Because that's what was happening. That's what was, it was going to be infected, and who knows, end up, in, end, end up into an uh, abscess, and then, then you have real problems. But even some of these remedies can even, in many cases, they can reverse even the abscess. Because normally when you have abscess, you're going to even, either lose the tooth or you have to get a root canal, right? And root canals are not really good. Did you know I looked at some, some stats and they found that it was probably 90% of women who had breast cancer had root canal. 90% of those who had breast cancer uh, had root canal. That's a high percentage, very high percentage. So there, there seems to be some connection uh, to that. These oil contains cloves, cinnamon bark, rosemary, lemon, and eucalyptus. Here's a, a Beverly Fester from Canada talking about how she was used, used uh, these oil. She says, I have, a, uh, I have a crown that was infected and throbbing with pain. For several nights, I soaked a small piece of cotton with thieves and tucked it between my tooth and cheek. The next morning, the pain was gone. Within two days, the swelling was gone and the infection was almost gone. I continued for a couple more nights. She said nights, should be nights, just to make sure that it had cleared up. So what did she do? She took a, a small piece of a gauze or whatever, put it between the tooth and the gum. And again, my husband had a very deep cavity filled and some other dental work as well. A few days later, his tooth was so infected that the dentist sent him home with his prescription, prescription for antibiotics and an appointment to come back and have his tooth pulled. I gave him a Q-tip, which I broke in half and dropped a few drops of thieves oil on it and asked him to put it between his cheek and gums where the tooth hurt. He called me from work a few hours later to let me know the tooth stopped hurting, the infection is gone, and he gets to keep his tooth. I love thieves. <laughs> so if you, you might want to get some thieves oil and keep it on hand. Because, uh, and I think about this too, as I was talking about earlier, sometimes when you, when you, you know, either a co-worker that you've been trying to witness to or Neighbors, if you're going out in the neighborhood or whatnot, the, the, I tell you that that health message will break down a lot of doors. Because as we were talking in there, it, it, people don't feel that you're preaching to them. They feel that you're trying to help them. You're really trying to preach to them, ultimately. You want to present Jesus to them, right? But it kind of opens the door. And so uh, we go to, now, we go to the next remedy, which is one of the most, for toothache, and infection or abscess is probably considered the number one remedy. These all work very, very well. So I, you know, I would say keep it on hand. It works for other things too, but keep it on hand. Uh, you will, you will be glad that you did. Mm -hmm. 
Between the holidays and my desire to avoid a root canal, I read the garlic for tooth abscess and began doing the whole small clove, chewing as long as I could stand twice a day. This guy read about garlic for toothache, right? He says, I noticed a difference right away, but especially after the second day. However, my skin was also raw from the contact. I've dropped it down to one-fourth clove, chew for about 20 seconds at night only. So basically, you take one clove of garlic, right? And there's different ways to do it. The average person, they chew it, put it on the tooth that they're having a problem with. Now, I can tell you right now, it's going to be hot. It's going to be hot. And you may, you know, you probably be doing a little moving around. But it's nothing compared to if you've ever had an abscess. It's, it's like nothing. Uh, it's like nothing that you, that you felt. Anyone ever have an abscess, an abscess too? So you know what I'm saying, right? She says, I have a molar that has had two root canals. Yes, two, in the past 20 years. I sucked on one-fourth bulb of garlic and then ate it two nights in a row. The th throbbing pain left quickly. Now I eat it about once a week for prevention. And garlic is not expensive, is it? It's very inexpensive, very inexpensive. It's amazing that some of these remedies that God has given us. You know, and garlic is really a broad spectrum antibiotic. You know, if, if you could take garlic and, and, and giving its broad spectrum antibiotic properties and, and sell it and, and say if you could, you could uh, get a, um, a patent on it and sell it, uh, you make a king's ransom. That's how effective it is. Um, so garlic is pretty much the number one in terms of use. It's pretty much the number one um, use remedy by people uh, when it comes to abscesses and toothaches. A tooth abscess is an infection at the root of a tooth under the gum line. Conventional treatments include antibiotics, pulling the tooth or a root canal. Natural remedies can often relieve dental pain and even heal the infection. Used faithfully, natural remedies can bring healing to an infection and save the tooth. It is of utmost importance to treat a tooth abscess immediately. Bacteria from an untreated infection can spread through the bloodstream and lead to sepsis, which can be life-threatening. So don't ignore it. These are the recommended instructions. To use, the garlic, uh, to use garlic as a treatment, select a fresh garlic clove. I would recommend, if you can, organic, if you can get an organic one. Yes. Amen? Yes, amen. Uh, peel the garlic and rinse it with warm water. Then place the clove in your mouth and crush it with your teeth. As you begin crushing the garlic, you should experience a natural numbing sensation and burning. Continue chewing the garlic until the pain has subsided. Spit out the clove and rinse your, your mouth with warm water. Consider sipping on water with a few drops of peppermint or a clove essential oil in it to help freshen your breath. <laughs> You're going to smell like garlic for a while. <laughs> now, let's flip over to the all-popular <laughs> coronavirus. I don't know how popular it is. <laughs> Now, let's first look at this. Coronaviruses aren't uncharted territory like what we're hearing. It's not actually accurate. This strain may be different, but it's not, it's not really new. Uh, in fact, human coronaviruses are responsible for 15 to 30 percent of common colds every year. Uh, more severe cases of coronavirus infections were observed during outbreaks of severe acute respiratory syndrome. Remember SARS? That was, a, that was a type of coronavirus. And Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome, MERS, two coronavirus infections that led to pneumonia in some individuals who were infected. So the idea that, that it's something new and that never, we've never seen before, and it's oh, we, and that's not totally accurate. It's a different strain, strain but it's not something just, you know, that, that was just, just totally, totally, totally new. These outbreaks spark interest from the complementary medicine community who began investigating natural solutions for treating SARS and MERS infections. These natural substances demonstrated viral inhibition of SARS coronavirus. So in other words, when they broke out before, the complementary health community said, listen, let's look up 
let's see if we can find natural things to treat these, these diseases. And so they start to do a little research and, and look at some things and how they work. And, some, and the studies demonstrate that SARS coronavirus and the, and the 2019 novel coronavirus are both structure, structurally and mechanically similar and thus can be, term, can be uh, targeted by the same substances. So it's not that new. It's not that different. They're very similar. That's what they found when they begin to look into a best way to deal with them. Uh, one paper published in the Chinese Journal of Preventive Medicine states that the 2019 novel, novel coronavirus is actually less pathogenic than the SARS coronavirus, suggesting that the natural substances below may be even more effective in their coronavirus inhibiting properties. So according to this journal, those two were more deadly than this one. You haven't heard that much, huh? And all of the hysteria that's going on? Guess one, one, one of the ones that they found to be effective. Anybody ever hear licorice root? Isn't that something? The, actual, the active constituent, you know, I'm sure you've heard of uh, glycerin. The, actual, the, actual, the active con constituent in licorice root has been shown to, it, to exhibit potent, the potent, what's the word? Potent. Strong, right? That's right. Ability to hinder the coronavirus. Against its ability to do what? Replicate. So here we have a lowly supplement licorice root that's been shown with these other ones, these other SARS virus, to inhibit its capacity to replicate. Viruses need to have that capacity. If they can't replicate, there are other, a couple of other things also, flavonoids. You familiar with flavonoids? Yeah. They also found, when they were dealing with these, that flavonoids also have the ability to help against the propagation of these cells. Um, they have the, you can see on the screen it says, to directly inhibit coronavirus' protease activity resulting in decreased virus propagation. So I try not to make it, I try to keep it, I don't want to make it too technical. So, uh, and these are some of the flavonoids with the highest power to inhibit viruses. Anyone have a quercetin? Yep. Yeah. And again, flavonoids, as you can see there, are a diverse group of phytonutrients or plant chemicals. What are they? Phytonutrients, plant chemo chemicals. They found that these are very effective against the SARS and the MERS, who this Chinese study said is even more, or even more hard to deal with than what we're dealing with now in this coronavirus. They're found in almost, these flavonoids are found in almost all fruits and vegetable, vegetables. There's another plant that they found in one animal study, chamelin plant. Uh, it demonstrated also significant antiviral activity against SARS uh, coronavirus in studies. So that's just three that they found before. You know, I think about these, these things that the Creator has given us. And you know, when Jesus was here, he walked the earth, and he was raising people from the dead and healing folks. And remember in the Old Testament when they came upon the water, and the water, they couldn't drink the water? And the Bible says that the Lord showed Moses a tree or a shrub, right? And when he put the shrub into the water, the water was made pure to drink. Now, in these days, in all of us, uh, you know, our scientific knowledge, we think well, that's, 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 that's too simple, <laughs> right? It can't be, that's just too simple. Things don't work like that. But think about it. Who, wh what would we have done when, if God had told us, just march around Jericho? 
People are like, no, well, we have to make sure that we, you know, make sure and, and understand, you know, the, the mathematical certainty of, of this is going to happen and that's going to happen. You know what I found in, in natural medicine? There's power in simplicity. That's what I found. There's power in, simpli in simplicity. Now, this is what I, when my wife and I first started talking about, when I first started hearing everything about this, this virus, this is the first thing that came to my mind. I said, you know what we should do? I said, I bet you vitamin, I said, it's a virus. You treat a virus the same way with natural substance. I said, it's a virus. I said, I know everyone is all worked up. I said, the first thing I would start doing is I would start increasing my, my intake of vitamin C. That's the first thing I, I thought. Now, let's, let's look at some of the research that's coming out of China. Guess what they're using? Vitamin C. Vitamin C. Vitamin C is already being used to prevent and treat COVID-19 in China and in Korea. We're not hearing much about that, are we? And it is working. Uh, an official statement from China's Jiaotong University, second hospital, it says, on the afternoon of February 20th, 2020, another four patients with severe coronavirus pneumonia recovered from the C-10 West Ward of the hospital in the past eight in the past, eight patients have been discharged from hospital. High dose vitamin C achieve good results in clinical applications. We believe that for patients with severe neonatal pneumonia and for critically ill patients, vitamin C treatment should be initiated as soon as possible after admission. Numerous studies have shown that the dose of vitamin C has a lot to do with the effect of treatment. High dose vitamin C can not only improve antiviral levels, but more, import more importantly, can prevent and treat acute lung injury and acute respiratory distress. You know what's killing the people? It's pneumonia. And so they're finding with high dosages of vitamin C, very, very, very high dosages, uh, you can reverse the virus. Vitamin C. Now, there also, as we go forward, you're going to see some people are using intravenous vitamin C. I can show you uh, something that you can use that's just as effective as intravenous vitamin C uh, as getting into your bloodstream and into your cells. So, here we have another. We're going to have to wait on a vaccine, right? We already have a substance that's being used in China because they said we can't wait. People are dying. So they're giving them very, very, very high doses, very, very high doses of vitamin C. Sometimes I work with people with cancer, and I say, yeah, I want you to take this much vitamin C. They're like, I want you to take 15, 16, 20,000 milligrams a day. They're like, well, that's a lot. Won't that kill me? <laughs> Sometimes you have these people taking up to 200,000 milligrams a day. It's water soluble. That means that basically means it passes out of the system in 24 hours. Another report from Korea, uh, Dr. Shin, Chin, Shin. He says at my hospital in Daegu, South Korea, all inpatients and all staff members have been using vitamin C orally since last week. Some people this week had a mild fever, headaches, and coughs. And those who had symptoms got 30,000 milligrams of intravenous vitamin C. Some people got better after about two days, and most had symptoms go, aw go away after one injection. So they're working in the hospital where people with, with coronavirus, right? And they're taking vitamin C, and a person here you know, gets a little cough or whatnot. They put them on higher dosages, and they get better. Why aren't we hearing about vitamin C? Another doctor, Richard Z. Ching, uh, International Vitamin C China Epidemic Medical Support Team leader, he says, we need to broadcast a message worldwide very quickly. Vitamin C, small or, or large dose, does no harm to people and is, the, is, and is the one of the few, if not the only agent that has a chance to prevent us from getting and can treat COVID-19 infection. We can, we can, we medical doctors and scientists, put patients' lives first. 
But when can we? Have you heard anything on CN, uh, MSNBC or CBS or Fox News or any of these about this, about vitamin C? This is the Shanghai, this is an article that came out the other day. The Shanghai government officially recommends vitamin C. It says, the government of Shanghai, China, has announced its official recommendation that COVID-19 should be treated with high amounts of intravenous vitamin C. Dosage recommendations vary with severity of illness from 50 to 200 milligrams per kilogram body weight per day to as much as 200 milligrams uh, kilograms a day. These dosages are, approx are approximately 4,000 to 16,000 milligrams for an adult administered by IV. Now, you say, well, I, don't, I can't get this via IV, so what am I supposed to do? Because oral vitamin C, a lot of it, when you say you go to the store and you take 1,000 milligrams or 5,000 milligrams, a good portion of it is destroyed in the gastrointestinal tract, right? So your option then is to get liposomal vitamin C. You ever, you ever heard, have you ever heard of it? Liposomal or lipo-C? Lipo C, lipo something. Lipo is for the short for liposomal vitamin C, and basically what it does is it you take it by mouth, and the way it's it's made, the particles are allowed to go into the bloodstream, into the cells, almost as if you were getting an IV. In fact, some of the studies show it's a little bit more effective than the IV and getting into the system. So um, basically, what you do, you you can buy it. Uh, I I. One, one of the brand that I recommend is from Dr. Uh, Dr. Lamb. He's an Adventist physician out in, uh, in California. But he has, and it's not cheap. It's not cheap. To get a high quality for a bottle about this size is about 50 bucks. Yeah, but it works. It's liquid. And the way you take it is you take, it, you take, a, you take a, 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 a water bottle and you put about four ounces of water in it. Uh, put about four ounces of water, yep, about that much. And you put, normally in that, it's like one teaspoon, like a measured teaspoon that you cook with, a little teaspoon, is about 1,200 milligrams, one of those teaspoons. So if you put, say, five of those teaspoons in there, what are you getting? 60, 6,000, 6,500 milligrams with one. Take it on an empty stomach, it goes into the bloodstream in about 20 minutes. And not only in the bloodstream, it gets inside of the cells. And it's one of the things when you're treating cancer and things of that nature, you have to have high dosage of that because it gets inside of the cell and in the bloodstream. So if, in instance, so you say, well, I'm not going get, to get intravenous vitamin C. Get a few bottles of that, you know, and take it. Take it every day. Keep it on hand. Uh, it's called Lipo-C, liposomal vitamin C. Um, it goes on to say here, At the last paragraph, it says, Richard Ching, Z. Ching, a Chinese-American specialist physician, has been working closely with medical and government authorities throughout China. He has been instrumental in facilitating at least uh, three Chinese clinical IV vitamin C studies now underway. So again, they're in the midst of the, they're very, in the very midst of this problem, and they're using what worked, what's working for them. Liposomal, yeah. L-I-P-O-S-O-M-A-L, I think it is. You can do it, just look for it short. Lipo, just look L-I-P-O, Lipo-C, and it should pop up if you do a search. Yeah, I, they have different kinds, but I, 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 I recommend Dr. Lamb. He's a physician, an uh, Adventist physician out of uh, California. Uh, his is the one that I use and recommend. Uh, there are others out there, but because I use it, I know it works. I just, you know, there could be others that work as well. Um, this is another, this is another, this is published, published on orthomolecular.org. Uh, this is what they say. There is only one existing treatment for the new coronavirus, vitamin C. Vitamin C supports your immune system. Vitamin C helps to cure the virus and reduces the symptoms of infection. It's not a COVID, quote, cure, but nothing is. It might just save your life, though, and will definitely reduce the severity of the infection. If someone tells you it's not proven, consider two things. Nothing is proven to work against COVID-19 because it is a new virus. Two, vitamin C has worked against every single virus, including influenza, pneumonia, and even 
uh, poliomyelitis. So vitamin C has been found to pretty much knock out anything in the right of dosage amounts. You've seen the, the doctors are using it in China. And they use it in high dosages to help quell this virus. So think about it. If they're using it, um, and it's working, why is it that in 2017, about 67,000 people in the U.S. died from the flu? 2017, about 67,000 died in the U.S., just in the U.S., from the flu. Do we hear much about that? This is another article from Arthur Molecular Nutrition. It says, if you do nothing else, start taking vitamin C right away. At least three grams, that's 3,000 milligrams a day, spread right across the day. That's 1,000 milligram capsule every eight hours or a level teaspoon of powder. And I recommend, if I was taking it, I mean, you can get the capsule or the powder, but I recommend the lipo. You know, it's, it's just a better. You're going to get it. It's going to be almost like taking an IV. When it, the way it goes into the system. If you take it on an empty stomach and wait at least 20 minutes before you eat, uh, you give it 20 minutes to get into the system. Um, if you're smart and motivated, do all the other things recommended. Now, when we say everything recommended, we need to follow the laws of health. Amen? Amen. Supplements are just that. They supplement the laws of health. Right. Trust in the creator, sunshine, exercise, what? Air, rest, diet, self-control, the laws of health. The laws of health, they are the foundation of all healing. When and if you catch a bug that might be COVID-19, simply increase your vitamin C intake around the teaspoon. That's four to five grams or four to five thousand milligrams in water, uh, which helps to keep you hydrated every three or four hours and keep on taking it. And then you can consult your doctor, et cetera. And so that's one thing about with vitamin C. Even if you start to come down with a cold, right? If you start taking three to four, 5,000 milligrams of C every two or three hours, normally time it's going to knock it right out. Hmm? Yeah, even the flu. If you start coming down, sometimes the flu can catch you off guard. Uh, but I remember my wife was coming down with the flu some years ago. She came home from work. We were living in Orlando at the time, and she came in. I was in the living room, and she went straight to the room. She didn't say anything. I'm like, what's going on? So she was taking her clothes off as she went. She said she was in so much pain that even her clothes were hurting. And so uh, I basically made what some of you might call a concoction. I took warm water, lemon juice, cayenne pepper. I also gave her elderberry, grapefruit seed extract, uh, vitamin C, and, I, and a mixture, and I gave it to her every 30 minutes. Every 30 minutes. In less than 24 hours, she was like 99% back. But this was like around the holidays, and she's like, oh, I'm going to go. I was like, you need to calm down. You know, you, you, I know you feel good, but you need to rest. You know, she's like, no, I'm going to go, you know. And she went running to and fro, and she kind of started coming back on her again. So I said, yeah, you, have, you still have to rest. Because when you get sick like that, your body, your immune system has been compromised. So you need to give it time to regenerate, you know, rest. One of the best things for our immune system is rest. Amen. But that's just to say that God has given us these remedies. What we need is a knowledge on how to use them. And not only a knowledge, but faith that they work. Because it is the healing power of God that works in the remedy. Amen? Amen. Amen. Remember what God told Israel? He says, if you follow, diligently follow my commandments, my laws and my statutes, I will bring none of these diseases on you that I brought upon the Egyptians. Right. For I am the Lord that, thy God that healeth thee. Amen? Amen. So God can heal you outright, or he can put the healing power in these remedies to heal you. But it's still God that does the healing. Amen. 
Now, let's move on. So again, coronavirus, don't go into anaphylactic shock. <laughs> Get your vitamin C if you're scared and worried about it. But don't, don't ignore the laws of health and just say, I'm going to take vitamin C. Follow the laws of health that God has given us. Uh, if you want to keep your immune system a little sheared up, you can take, you know, maybe 3,000 milligrams a day as a preventative since everything, you know, is people are kind of worked up. This is, a, this is one of our friends here in Florida. He's not a spider. <laughs> the, the brown recluse spider, right? He is not a spider that you want to be bitten by. Now, Dr. Agatha Thrash, many of you know her, right? I heard her before she passed. Dr. Agatha Thrash pointed out that the treatment of choice for a brown recluse spider bite is what? Vitamin C. Charcoal. <laughs> <laughs> Activated charcoal, right? In fact, there is no other recognized treatment except wide surgical excision. There is no known antidote. Isn't that something? Yeah, the, the venom of, the, of a brown recluse spider will eat. If you don't check it, it will eat all the way to the bone. And yet God has given us something that's so simple, so inexpensive. Activated charcoal. Dr. Agatha Thrash said the only thing they really, there's no known antidote, she said, is a surgical incision. That basically means they have to operate, take out, what they try to do is they try to take out the necrotic or the dead flesh. They operate, clean the wound out, and they may have to try to do surgery to kind of plastic surgery to make it look better, but a lot of times you have a huge, huge scar or dip a hole where your tissue was. Just from the bite of this spider. That's why I named it, you know, terrible diseases, simple remedies, but powerful results. Speaking of charcoal, Dr. Dana Mayat says, Mayat says, it's the only thing to do for a brown recluse spider bite. Conventional medical treatment consists of giving both an antibiotic and uh, prednisone, both of which are basically worthless and preventing the inedible tissue damage that will follow. But placing a charcoal potent over the bite site will pull the toxins out of the system, usually in as little as one hour. I have also used it successfully in black widow spi spider bites, not as serious as a brown recluse spider bite, but very painful. I would also recommend that you drink it as well. Take a a, whole, a heaping teaspoon, glass of water, make the poultice, and also drink it. And I would change that poultice probably every 20 minutes. And normally what would only be left is a, possibly a small discoloration, area of discoloration. Think, compare that with going and having to get surgery and get prednisone and, you know, all these different things. Something simple and inexpensive that, again, that reminds us of the love of the creator. Amen? Amen. Charcoal also works. Ellen White talked about it in, in snake bites. She herself said if she had one remedy that she had to choose, that she could have no other remedies, she, it would be charcoal. That is, uh, in fact, I think you should, we used to, when I was doing uh, some medical missionary classes, we was teaching the students to keep a, a natural remedy emergency kit. And there should include uh, activated charcoal. I know I'm not going to remember everything. Char uh, uh, cayenne pepper, at least 90,000 heat units, right? You have to have at least 90,000 heat units to stop a heart attack. At least 90,000 heat units to stop a heart attack. At least. And how would you use that? You could use it if, if the person is, is, if they're having a heart attack and they're conscious, you can put, you can put it, uh, give them a warm cup of water, teaspoon of, of cayenne pepper, mix it in and have them drink it and call 911. If they're unconscious or you, if you have the tincture, you know, the, the liquid, the tincture or the extract, if they pass out, you know, open their mouth and give them two full shots of it. That would stop the heart attack and call 911. That might save their life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I, I actually, I, I, I was at church one, one Sabbath some years ago, and I had, uh, I, had, I, had, I had that in my pocket, and I had lo lobelia in my other pocket. 
and they had called me. There was a brother in the, uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the room, in the, in the sick room. He wasn't doing well. So they came to get me, asked me, could I help him? So I asked him, how are you doing? He said he was having problems breathing. He's like, so they were going to call the, uh, they were gonna call the uh, ambulance, yes. So he was, so I said, let me wait. Let me give you some of this lobelia. So I asked someone to go and get me a, a spoon. So I gave him, I gave him, I think it was two teaspoons of this lobelia. And I said, we're going to wait about 20 minutes. And in about 20 minutes, I asked him, how are you feeling? And he had tears rolling down his eyes because now he could breathe freely from the lobelia, which is an herb, which is it's a specific for the lungs. Uh, it, help, it helps with breathing. It helps people who have like a history sometimes of asthma and other issues. And so a lot of times cancer patients in their late stage, sometimes they'll have problem breathing too. And sometimes that, that, that will help. So uh, <clears throat> just, I, it just crossed my mind. If you ever have a loved one in the hospital with a very, with a, with a very you know, they're dying, just so you know, <clears throat> if you go to the hospital <clears throat> and you touch their legs and their legs are ice cold, it's gonna, they're probably not going to live through the night. They're probably going to die. It's just so. So if you go and, you know, you, go, you feel their feet, their legs, if they're, if they're really sick, even if they're conscious and normally if you, when, if you go, say you went the night before and everything is, oh, their legs feel okay, but if you go there and you touch their legs and their legs are cold, probably by the next day they'll be dead unless God intervenes and keeps them alive. Every case I've ever seen like that, they're dead normally within hours or it's just that the body is shutting down. That's why part of our work, and we're doing the medical missionary work, is, is, is not only physical, but it's also spiritual. Because you, you're not, every case is not going to be saved. Not, not every person gonna, is going to live. So that's why it's called medical missionary. Right? The me- missionary work. Of course, you would like to see every person regain health and every person live, and they have a better chance than normally with, with medication, especially with serious diseases. But there's some people going to be, God is going to lay to sleep. But our role is to say, oh, you know what? Hey, it's okay if they know Jesus. Yeah. Amen? Because they're just going to go to sleep. Have you ever thought about this? That one day, if you die, if you and I die, that one day you're going to wake up and you're going to think you're waking up to start the day and is that going to be the resurrection? Amen. You ever thought about that? You know how we, wake, we go to sleep, well, I got to do this tomorrow, and I got to do that tomorrow, I got to do that tomorrow. And we wake up, you know, one day we're going to wake up, and it's going to be the resurrection. We ever, think, we ever thought about that? So that's why it's important. Remember this morning I had a quote that said that the health message is the right arm of the third angel's message. It's part of the gospel. So it's here to relieve present suffering and to open people's hearts for what Jesus is do for them, but it's also... Help to point, help help us to help people to be able to point them to Jesus. So if God determines not to heal them, that we've pointed them to the life giver. Amen. Amen. Anyone here ever been bitten by a spider or bumblebees or spider? Did you use activated charcoal? No. Yes. We didn't know at the time. I, I was on the road thirty miles from home. Right. <laughs> So that's why it's a good idea, like, you know, it's, it's to keep, like, uh, make, like, a little um, a natural emergency, a, a natural medicine emergency kit where you have, uh, like I said, the cayenne pepper, activated charcoal, tea tree oil. Um, what else would go in there? Thieves oil. Um, have some gauze in there. Uh, I can't think. There's a few other things you could put in there. Niacin, he said? You could have niacin. Uh, um, but you want it to be something that you can use quickly and efficiently uh, and, and something that gets very quick results in general. Um, what about that lobelia? Lobelia could be in there as well. Um, the, um, and also, and just make sure you have a knowledge on how to use these things. Uh, I see a question Actually, or a comment. You were asking about if you've been bitten. I even used it on my dog. I had a Rottweiler at the time that was bitten by a water moccasin twice. Wow. Two different places. 
I remember that I had just recently, about two weeks prior, bought Activate Charcoal at a health seminar. It was the last jar that they had, and I was debating, should I get it, should I not? And I believe that the Lord impressed me to get it because two weeks later I had to use it. And I said, Lord, in your name, my daughter's going to get healed. I covered her, I put, did a poultice, covered her from head to toe, found where the two bites were, one on her muzzle, one on her foot. Called the vet, they said, your daughter's not going to make it. That's the water moccasin that she just bit to twice. I said, in your name, Lord. And with that, she was healed the next day. I, I even forced her to drink it because she didn't want to drink it. <laughs> so imagine. But that's how powerful, even with our animals. Amen. With the Lord's in, um, power and the things that he gives us, those natural remedies. Amen. And, 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 and imagine that what she said. You know, a, 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 a moccasin is a very, they have a very potent bite. Yes. And, uh, and just goes to show again how, uh, how these remedies, simple remedies, and a knowledge on how to use them. You notice I always add a knowledge on how to use them. Because it doesn't matter how powerful the remedy is if we don't know how to use it. And use it effectively. So, I mean, think about that, how a moccasin you know, bit the dog twice. And... And God basically used the, the remedy to heal it. I remember, I think I, I tell this when I do this presentation, the other presentation, my wife was, when we lived, we used to live up in Claremont, and we came home from church one night, and uh, she started you know, doing this. I was like, what's wrong? She said, something's biting me, you know? And there were, she was in the fire ants. And so uh, I said, okay, go in and, and wash off. I'm coming in. I'm coming in, I think. So when I got in, she was rubbing the, the charcoal, she had her, her, her foot underneath the, uh, the water, but she had the charcoal under water and she was rubbing on it. So what happened was her, her legs were burning like fire from the fire ants, but when she rubbed the charcoal, the, the, the heat, the burning stopped. But then it was replaced by itching, severe itching. So I took uh, tea tree oil and sprayed the tea tree oil on her legs and it took away the itching right away. So two natural remedies, activated charcoal, and tea tree oil, fire ants, boom. Uh, so again, for our, of course, you've ant bites, bee bites, snake bites. Uh, and snake bite, you know, use it and then call 911. But go ahead and use it. Uh, and uh, you'll be surprised at what God can do with these rivers. You see some of the, here's some of the pictures at various stages of these bites. You know, it's best to catch it early on because as it goes on and goes on, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And these bites can do, they can do a lot of damage if not, you know, this is after a few days here. That is dead flesh that they have to go in and that's, that's, that's a problem. Just from a small spider, this is about this big. Dr. Thrash adds, the brown recluse spider produces a bite that gives little or no pain at first. In 24 hours, a purplish red zone develops around the bite and extensive tissue death occurs. It may produce a very deep and angry ulceration extending down to the bone, which lasts for weeks or months. We have had three brown recluse spider bites successfully treated with charcoal. Dr. Agatha Thrash. Now, I always recommend, um, there's a book that I would highly recommend you get called Charcoal Rx. It's one of the best books I've seen on, on the uses of charcoal. It's, it's done by Adventists as well, called Charcoal, charcoal Rx, if I'm not mistaken. And it has a lot of um, applications in it on how, and a lot of different, different variations of people who've, who've had different situations where they've been able to use activated charcoal very effectively. She says, which produce no ulceration and only the faintest purple discoloration after one week. The sooner treatment is begun, the better. The spider is brown and has a fiddle-shaped mark on the back. Who's ever heard of poke root? Did you know that poke root can actually cure AIDS? Hmm. Anybody ever heard of poke root? Yes? No? Then Sally, right? <laughs> Poke root weed yields a drug that fights AIDS. Researchers have said that a drug developed from the leaves of an otherwise poisonous weed appears to be 1,000 times more potent 
than the drug AZT in destroying the AIDS virus. The University of Minnesota said that the drug contains a virus-fighting protein from the new leaves of the pokeweed, a perennial American herb that is otherwise poisonous to humans. When used alone, the protein inhibits the production of the AIDS virus in those cells in the immune system. When coupled with monoclonal antibodies, inhibition of the AIDS virus production was, in, was increased as much as 1,000-fold. Herbalists have been using poke root for many years with a very good cure rate. Poke root. I had a family member who had AIDS. Told him, take this poke root. Take it exactly how I tell you to take it. Exactly. Don't deviate. Guess what? He took a little, started feeling better. So oh, I want to take more. He started to what? Vomit, and he couldn't stop. And when he finally stopped, you know, he, and, but he went to the doctor, and they were like, "What? You know, what are you taking? Your your white blood cell count." But now, because he didn't follow the directions, now he was scared to take it again, <laughs> even though it was doing well for him. Some of these remedies. Can, ha, can have very powerful results. So they need to be taken just the way instruct to be, uh, that you're instructed to take them. Or, so it's very important to be knowledgeable. That's why I keep saying a knowledgeable use of these remedies are very well for you. Poke root, they found it to be, they thought a, a thousand times stronger than AZT, which is the drug they were given the time for the AIDS virus. So I have here, as a part of a total herbal program, one to three tablespoons of poke juice from the leaves of pokeweed, which should be mixed in eight ounces of water and drank three to four times a day. How many of you have heard of herbal surgery? How many of you have heard of herbal surgery? Never heard of it? Herbal surgery. When you mix blood root with other proteolytic herbs high in enzymes to break down protein, a powerful reaction takes place that acts on dead flesh, cancer cells, and at the same time, it will not, on, it will not act on healthy tissue. Examples of some of these proteolytic herbs are red clover, poke root, uh, sheep sorrel, yellow cedar. You can see them there. And when you combine them with blood root. So basically what the, the concept is doing surgery by using herbs. For instance, here's what we call a drawing salve. Red clover, mullein powder, plantain powder, chaparral, turpentine, uh, pine tar, poke root, and blood root. And what's going to happen there? As you put it on there, it begins to break down the protein. It's going to leave the flesh that's not diseased, but the flesh that's diseased is going to go after it. And basically, it's going to have the effect as if, as if, you were, as if there was a physician cutting out the tumor, for instance, if it was a tumor. But it can be very painful. So you had, this is a powerful drawing salve that would draw tumors from deep in the body. You could. Example two. You want me to go back? Yeah. One more. Whoever thought that the simple remedies that God has given us can even go to, to, high, to, a high, to such a high level of being able to work on the body? Now, remember, this is not to take away the laws of health. Those are the foundation. 
the trust in the creator, the sunshine, the exercise, the water, the air, the rest, the diet, and the self-control or temperance. But even the laws of health have a scientific application. Right? Like water. Why should I drink water? What does it do in the body? How does it work? Why, how, much, how much water do I need? Uh, what, what, what does it do to my gastrointestinal tract, my brain? This, why does God say drink water, get sleep, get exercise? Water? There's a scientific reason behind all those. Huh? Tell me to do them all. Yeah, you have to do them all. Yeah, God gave them to us to do all of them. Uh, and so... I want to go. Yeah, I have is that good. Example two, herbal surgery blend. Garlic, blood root, red root, zinc chloride. Mix herbs first, then mix garlic and then add zinc chloride. Let it sit for 24 hours. Apply over a lump, over a lump or cancer. This actually has the effect of herbal surgery of pulling out a tumor or a cyst, or those different things. Now, like I said before, sometimes there, there can be pain. So there's certain things you can do, like adding DMSO. This is from Wilson. Herbal surgery is one of the best diagnostic remedies available. Just apply some over the area. If it burns, you have cancer or, de or dead tissue. Herbal surgery will burn, and at times it's very painful, but rubbing DMSO over it will stop the pain. With herbal surgery, you would need no antibiotic, no blood transfusion, no stitches, and no anesthesia. Uh, in most cases, it takes five to ten days to kill cancer tumors and remove them. Hmm? Mamie Wilson. Mm hmm Mamie Wilson. So a lot of times, that's when you're working. A lot of times, you have these tumors, cancerous tumors, but they work on other type of tumors as well. Uh, but you're also working on the end, and at the same time, you're removing that. You're also working on the inside. I had a, I had a case some years ago. Uh, of cancer, and the lady was, uh, uh, she had waited too late, to be honest, and someone said, oh, and so I, when, I, when I finally talked to her, I, I said, uh, I looked at her, all of her paperwork, and it had basically metastasized, I started in her breast, but it metastasized, and I was like, okay, I said, we can, she said, well, can you please help me, and I, I mean, I'm like, Shh. I said, only God can, you know, in that case like that, only God. God can still help, but so we, we, we helped as much as we could. But she had basically been sent home to die. And uh, so we went over, and my assistant went into the room <laughs> to look at the breast. And as uh, she went in to look at the breast, I actually have a presentation that I do where I actually put a picture of what it looked like. But... Uh, the cancer at this point was eating through the breast. And, and you have liquid coming out. So I'm in a, and again, I'm, I'm being purposely descriptive so that we can make sure that we don't want to get to that point. We want to make sure that we do what God said so we don't have to get to that point. Amen? Uh, and so she had a lot of pain. So, and again, also to just know that um, we did some things to help her with the pain, um, and, but there's a cautionary tale. She started to lose weight as we started on the program. Her skin got really, really, really clear. We made a combination of what we call herbal chemo, which basically you combine herbs, and it has the effect in the body as chemo, but it doesn't kill good cells. And um, she was doing, I mean, she lost a lot of weight. Her, her skin cleared up. Everything was going good. And then we found out a little later that when we weren't there, she was cheating. <laughs> she was cheating. And one thing she told me, she said, because, you know, in my mind, I knew that only she was not going to make it unless God intervened. When I, really get, when I looked at the cancer, when, from looking at her paperwork, it, it had metastasized to her right shoulder, a couple of her ribs, to her right femur, um, to the right side of her skull. Um, there's a couple other hot spots I can't remember now. It was some years ago. But I said, you know, this, she's probably not going to make it unless God does something. But one thing she asked me, she said she was a CNA, and she said she had seen a lot of people suffer with cancer. She says, one thing, if, if I can only, if I have to die, can you just help me that I don't suffer? 
And at this point where she was, she was not having any pain. And with, with the cancer that spread to her bone, she should have been having pain ordinarily, but it was because God was blessing the remedies and she was not having pain. And so, but she started cheating. We find out later. She started eating some things. She had people coming by, you know, family members bringing her things and she's eating them that she shouldn't be eating. And I remember one day saying, oh, she started having problems breathing. And so they took her to the hospital. And when I, went to see the, when I went to the hospital to see her, now she started having pain because they gave her um, probably morphine, I suspect. And because her body had, not, had, had been cleared of that, now they had to give her a lot. And when I came there to see her, she didn't even recognize me. She didn't even know who I was. So, again, some of these diseases are, are, are serious diseases, but I've seen God, I just recently, not really recently, but relatively recently, had a, 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 a guy with prostate cancer. Prostate cancer. And he, he wanted me to take the case. I spoke with him. I said, you got to do exactly what I tell you to do. He said, OK. He had his paperwork. He said, a doctor wants me to get uh, prostate surgery or whatever and radiation. So he said, well, I want you to talk to my doctor. I said, well, you know, I really, I really can't talk to your doctor because I'm you know, not a, you know, I can't, I'm not your, uh, they, want, they only want to talk like a, a family member. Because uh, he's his doctor. He said, well, I give him opportunity. I give him, I let him talk. I said, no. I said, that's your doctor. That's who, that's who you're supposed to deal with, you know, in this case. So he ended up telling the doctor that I was his son. And I don't know why you tell him that. <laughs> so, uh, so I ended up, I went ahead and talked with him. I didn't tell him, shouldn't tell the guy that. But, but his doctor told me, um, yeah, I want, you know, I want him to do, I, want, I think he needs this. It's a very aggressive type of tumor that he has. So I went back to him, I said, I said, it's up to you. I said, you know, if you want us to deal with it, we'll deal with it. He said, yeah, I want, I want, I want, to, I want to do it. I said, OK. And uh, he started on the program. He started going through it. And uh, in a couple of weeks, and he, he, about maybe three weeks, he went back to the doctor. And the doctor told him, he said, hey, he said, uh, he said I don't know what you're doing, but the, uh, the tumor it's shrinking. He said, well, are you doing something? And this particular guy was Jamaican. He said, yeah, I'm, I'm taking Bush, which means, you know. <laughs> and so he, uh, he said, I don't know what you're doing. He said, but keep doing what you're doing. And so, and in the middle of the program, he had to stop pretty much and get a hernia surgery. So that kind of threw a monkey wrench. Uh, I mean, he was able to get back on it. And so maybe another month later, a couple of months later, he told my wife to tell me, hey, I got something to tell your husband. I need to tell him. So I, and, he, and he called me. And he said, hey, I went back to the doctor. I got something to show you. He brought me his paperwork. No cancer. God blessed. God's hand. Because remember, I'm just a man. I can't heal. God said, it is I that healeth thee, saith the Lord. Amen? Amen. God's ways work if we follow them. And so um, some cases, if, if people follow the remedies as they should, you see powerful results. Uh, I've seen some miraculous things. I've seen herbs grow flesh, comfrey. I've seen herb comfrey literally regrow flesh on the bones. Human and animal. <laughs> she said, how did I do it? Poultice, yeah, use comfrey mixed with um, wheat germ oil and, um, <laughs> huh? yeah, yeah, vitamin E or wheat germ oil. Did you, the reason you use the, the wheat germ oil because wheat germ oil is very high in vitamin E. Uh, comfrey, honey, uh, and wheat germ oil. The honey is for any infection. The honey kills infection. Uh, did you know, in fact, there's some surgeons, military surgeons in the past, 
they've had where in the womb they just pour sugar in the womb because it dries up the, 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 uh, uh, the moisture and the bacteria can't grow in the moisture. And just regular honey. Even regular honey, yeah. She mentioned Manuka honey, which is a, more of a healing type of a honey. But even just regular honey will kill bacteria. Organic honey, it will kill the bacteria. So yet I've, seen it, I've actually seen comfrey regrow human flesh and pet flesh. Uh, who would think that an herb would regrow flesh? But it does. If you ever, how many of you have heard of Dr. Christopher, the naturopath? He talks, about, he talks about that. He talks about, he gives the story of two young men who were playing with matches, remember? And there was an explosion, and, and they burned their hands to the bones. And one, one, one of the parents, they took their, their son to, like, the, the regular doctors, and they did skin grafts and everything, and years later, he just had, like, nubs. The other doctor, the other parents brought their sons to him, and he made the, the comfrey. He used comfrey, honey, and some other things, you know, basically that, that same mixture, and their not only did their, 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 uh, the skin grow back, but the tendons, the muscles, everything grew back. Dr. Christopher tells the stories. And I've seen it. I've I, I seen it with my, I have a niece that had an issue with it. I have a German Shepherd that I used it on. Uh, uh, he was, when he was a puppy, he, another dog attacked him. And, and, uh, and, and one day as I was rubbing him, now we knew he had a couple of wounds, and one day I was rubbing him here after the attack, and as I rubbed on his neck, my hand went into a hole that the dog had uh, basically a uh, uh, puncture. So I took the uh, I took the um, the comfrey mixture and packed the wound with it. Uh, and the next day he ate it out because he's smelling the honey. <laughs> so so I had to pack it again and put one of those things around his head so that he can't yeah so he can't eat it. And 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 in less than a week. And less than a week, all of the flesh grew back. Before, remember, I could, I could actually put my finger down into, and with less than a week, it grew back. So, again, God's remedies, that's why I said terrible diseases, simple remedies, powerful results. Uh, was it dried comfrey? It was, it was, it was um, dried comfrey. It's powder and, and mixed with honey. And wheat germ oil, and yes, and, and you pack it into the wound. So if it's a deep cut or a wound, you pack it in. And what you'll see, many times the wound will basically pull it in. And instead of pulling off, just pack more. And it will, it, the flesh will grow back, regrow, and fill in the, the wound. Well, I have comfrey growing by man, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. And so, yeah. so, again, most people would not think at the amazing remedies that God has given us. But he's given us some amazing remedies. I'm going to close out now. Are there any questions? Question is, would that work for diabetic wounds? Normally, these wounds are normally caused by lack of circulation. Uh, first, I would try and it could help with the, with the healing. But I would also try to increase circulation by maybe taking cayenne capsules, cayenne and ginger capsules. Uh, uh, I've, I've recommended that for people with neuropathy, and it's helped uh, with the circulation. And then I would use something like that maybe for try to, after the circulation comes back, to try, to, to try and heal up those, uh, those wounds. Dr. Henry, we really appreciate you being here, and we would like to say thank you. So um, I have a couple of gentlemen ready to help with that, and I want to thank you for that. Um, I have seen several, if, if you'll go ahead, gentlemen. I have seen several of you taking pictures of the screen and such. That's good, but you know this is all going to be available on our website. You can look at it anytime. Okay? And you can see it uh, on your Roku, if you have a Roku, whichever. So uh, all of that is going to be there for you. So you can go back and look at this and stop it and write stuff down. <laughs> so it will all be available for you to do that, okay? 
myself. That's oh, right, yeah. Sorry about that. Helps if I get a microphone, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm talking about all this technology and won't use a microphone, right? <laughs> <laughs> but yes, this, this will be available to you. And so I want you to, uh, to take note of that so that you can get this information as you need it, all right? So, uh, so it'll be available to you, all right? So uh, thank you, thank you so much for that. And um, I, I want to ask another question, if I may. Suppose somebody wants to get in touch with you somewhere along the line a week from now. What do we do? Right. And uh, I, someone had asked me earlier, and I told him I, what I told him was not accurate. They asked me if the number on the flyer was my number, and I told him it was, but that's not my number. I'm sorry. That was the number to contact the church. Yeah. Uh, uh, they can visit um, me on Facebook or they can visit my website. Okay. You can, there you can contact me. Is my number there. It's phase3ministries.com. P-H-A-S-E, the number three, ministries.com. Okay. Uh, and you can contact me there for this health information. And I have a, you know, you can contact me at my phone number. Okay. It's, it's, it's there. Do you need that repeated one more time? Slowly. Okay. okay. Yeah. Phase, P-H-A-S-E. Faith, the number three, ministries.com. Phase Plural. three ministries. All right. So that's how they can get in right. touch anytime. All right. right. So right. I'll, I'll get out of your way and let you continue. Right. I, I think I saw a question over here. Well, I, I would say that it's, that it's if, if you don't necessarily have to be, I think it's a good uh, precaution to take. Of course, washing your hands. And, uh, but if you have to, I, I wouldn't say be, to be overly, but I would say that because you are supplying yourself with a good degree of protection with the vitamin C. But I would still say not to just put yourself there just because you can, you know, unless, you know, but, you know, if we, if we have this, I wouldn't say go out to, you know, wherever, just because I'm protected with vitamin C. I would still, you know, take regular precautions, but I wouldn't overdo it either, you know. Yeah, so. All right. Her question was about turmeric. Turmeric, which is one, it's, turmeric is one of the best uh, supplements or herbs out there. It's great for inflammation uh, throughout the body. It does. It's, it is. Turmeric uh, is an, uh, an anti-inflammatory because it works on inflammation anywhere in the body. And so a lot of people have gotten a, a lot of benefit with herbs like turmeric. You know, white willow bark is another one. Um, turmeric, white willow bark is another, one that take, uh, is another one that I like a lot, too. Uh, uh, oh, it slips me right now. Huh? What's the strength for turmeric? Huh? Well, what strength? I, here's what I would tell you. I've had people tell me they've had better success with loose turmeric, fresh turmeric. Like say if you buy like loose and you put it in capsules yourself, as opposed to buying the like the. Um, I've had I've had people tell me that. Uh, so I've had people I have, people have told me that they get good results sometimes with the uh, the milligrams of turmeric, but I've had people tell me they get even better results when they take the loose turmeric and either drink it or either put it in capsules themselves. So I, what I would do, if I was putting it in capsule myself, I would, put, I would mix, I would combine it with cayenne. I would combine it with cayenne pepper in the capsule, and the reason being because the cayenne pepper is going to dilate the vessels. And as I, as I take it, the, uh, the cayenne pepper is going to dilate the vessels, and it's, it's going to cause the turmeric to get uh, throughout the body more effectively. And Ratio? I would say probably, depending on how hot the cayenne is, I would say if it's really hot cayenne, say 130,000 heat units, I would say three to one, four to one, uh, four parts of turmeric to maybe one part of, uh, of, uh, of uh, cayenne. Similar. 
similar. I have. I have. You, and you can if you use, uh, what are those, those jury cleaners? I forget what they're called. Ultrasonic? Yeah, the ultrasonic cleaners. Uh, and I've actually had pretty good results. The problem is you have to get rid of it in about a week. Yeah, yeah, without it comes to, you know, you can put it in the refrigerator, but that's the problem with it. It's it's cheaper if you if you if you buy the you can buy the ingredients to make it, but the problem is being able to use it. You know, you have to use it up within a week or it's gonna start losing its capacity. You don't mention tea tree oil. I know that's an antifungal like for nail fungus. Or right. What else can you use it for? You can use tea tree oil for uh any type of fungal, uh also, tea tree oil can be used for, like, different types of infections that can help uh, externally, yeah. Like, sometimes I have recommend to use it for, like, sometimes guys get, like, like uh, jock itch. Uh, you know, I've seen it. All of oregano even helps even better. Uh, or even, like, you know, athlete feet. Right. I've seen people use tea tree oil. Tea tree oil is good for that. Um, it's best not to use it internal, you know. <laughs> I see her and then you. For a herniated or bulging disc? Probably, n probably not. Probably not. Uh, her, her question was, could comfrey be good for a, a bulging or herniated disc? And, and, and comfrey can help heal internal issues. Uh, but I don't think so. I don't think so. It's, you know, I've seen people use it for some things, but I don't, off the top of my head, I wouldn't think so. You don't have to. You, you can, but you don't have to. Yeah. Uh, what type of story is this uh, liposome or uh, vitamin C? A pharmacy or a health food store? Probably a health food store or online. Like if you go to, look up Dr. Lamb, Dr. L-A-M on, online, and he, uh, and his, his liposome, that's the one that I recommend and that I use myself. Uh, and uh, that's the one that, that I uh, have used with, with good success. And he didn't pay me, so. <laughs> you said besides turmeric? Um, MSM. Um, of course, the cayenne with turmeric. And there's another one that, that white willow bark. Yeah, if you could get the veggie, the vegan-based uh, glucosamine, there's one that combines MSM, CMO, and glucosamine, which is very good. That's from Diva Nutrition, actually, which all of theirs is, is, is vegan. They have, but they have one that, that it combines glucosamine, CMO, and MSM. This, this is pretty good. It's very, actually very good. That's what I was trying to think of, Boswilla. Extra, yes. Boswell is very, very helpful for that. Yes. Thank you. Also, if you get uh, lemon, lemon, lemon fast in two days, it'll help your joints a lot. You ever done that? I take the lemon peel to work, and then I've done it in three days, and all my joints and everything are clear. Oh, yeah? You get lemon, and I use the whole lemon peel and everything. You do it in like three days, off the one a day. Amen. I see her. And um, two questions. What would you suggest for seasonal allergies? And what is the function of the white willow bark? Is that strictly circulation? Or it's, for, it's for pain. The white, the white willow bark, is, is, it works similar to boswellia extract and similar to turmeric. It pulls inflammation out. It's, it's called nature's aspirin. Okay. It's, it's basically aspirin, but it's natural aspirin. Right. Yeah. And the other question was with allergies, seasonal allergies. There's, 
there's one of the things I've seen that works well for seasonal allergies. Uh, first of all, it, once you once you watch, you know, what you're eating and everything. If all, once all that is correct and you're sleeping and all those things are are, are, are good, um, exercising. If all those things are good, one of the things that I've seen that help with allergies a lot is chickweed. Not chickweed. Wait, let me take that back. That's not what I'm thinking. I'm thinking of. Uh, uh, what's it called? Not chickweed. It'll come to me in a second. But another another product that I've noticed that a lot of people have good results with is a combination of herbs. It's called rootology. Rootology. A lot of people have with allergies swear by it. It's it's a combination of herbs. Of herbs. It's called rootology. You can look it up. Uh, but I'm trying to think of the one. It probably has. Uh, Uh, it's not chickweed. I was trying to think of something else. There's so much information running through my head. It's kind of, uh, but but if you look at that root allergy and just read up on it, read some of the A lot of people uh, who have seasonal allergies, uh, it's just a combination of different herbs that they take, and they find a lot of a lot of good uh, benefit from it. That's what I was trying to think of. She helped me again. You know, she came to my school, right? That's why she's. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, the, it was, the stinging nettle is what I was trying to think of. The stinging nettle is very good. I recommend it for people with, with, uh, with seasonal allergies, and they have very good, a very good outcome. Yeah. Stinging nettle, what? Stinging nettle is a, it's a herb. I know. Yeah. Yes, for allergies, seasonal allergies. Yes. I think her in there. Mm-hmm. And I used to buy from Young Living. It's kind of expensive, but they have products that are not just you know uh, oil, but they have like a spray. Right. And you can clean with it. Uh, it's just wonderful, and it smells really good. So it's good for a, a lot of things. But thieves and the story they tell is how the and I forgot the name because the thieves came in. Uh, right. Boswell, right. It's also called frankincense. Yeah. 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 It, it's the same thing. It's, it's the same thing, yeah. You know, it's frankincense. It is. Frankincense is just a different name, yeah. Yeah. So it's called, it's called Boswell, but it, another name for it is also frankincense. Right. I don't know. Because they gave it to Jesus at the beginning. Like sometimes if you buy it, if you go to, you know, to a supplier to buy it, if you look up Boswilla, uh -huh. uh, it'll have Boswilla slash frankincense. Really? Right. So that's one of the names that they, they have for it. I think you were next, right? Uh, oil of oregano is also awesome. Awesome. It's even it, it, as strong as uh, tea tree oil is, all oregano is even stronger. Yeah. Four drops in the little yeah. water. water. Yeah, a lot of times you have, if you have a cold, you're coming out with a cold, yeah. four drops of oil of oregano. Drink it up. It's strong. You need to put we'll put it in water. Yeah. But a lot of times it'll you know it'll knock it out. Yeah, and, uh, burn your yeah it will. Apple pull acid, right? Acid, right? Amen. I saw another hand. Right. Yeah, yeah. Because that's what's coming out now. A lot of a lot of supplements they're combining it with the black pepper. Right, and I would say if you like, if you can't find it, you're probably not going to be able to find it with the cayenne. So you might just have to buy it and capsule it yourself. But if you combine it with the cayenne, you're going to get 
probably better better results than if, even with the black pepper. It's not going to really, you know, your stomach, have issues with your stomach. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. I, I can only say if, if I was going to, let's say if I was going to go, I don't know if I would, but if I was going to go, I would probably take about 20,000 milligrams of, of lipo. That, I mean, I would start in the morning and I would, I would take a, a few with me and I would take them throughout. That, if I was going to go, that's what I would probably do. So. Regular vitamin C helps, but uh, if you get a high quality vitamin C, you, you, you do better with the powdered vitamin C, which you mix, mix as opposed, you're going to get a better absorption rate with the, so you know how you have the powder and you mix, than even if you took like the, the cap, capsules. How much would you recommend? Even with the regular, I would represent rep probably similar amounts because you're going to get less of it. Like with the lipo, you're going to get about of 1,000 milligrams, the lipo, you're going to get about 98.5% of it, 99% of it. Same thing with, like, intravenous, you're going to get about 95, 96% of it. But with the, but with the, uh, the, the regular vitamin C, 1,000 milligrams, you're probably going to get about 700, maybe. 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 Five to ten. Mm hmm I would probably do that. I would probably do that a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Let's try to get up to around 20,000 milligrams. Oh, yeah, that's the thing. That's a good point. If you take, if you take they, they, they talk about taking it to bowel tolerance, but normally what happens with vitamin C, if you take too much, your body will tell you, will let you know, because you'll get diarrhea. And, and that's when they're saying, okay, that's enough. You don't have to take any more. Yeah, so they call, it, they call it taking it to bowel tolerance is what they call it. <laughs> she said, "What's the best the best um, recommendation for high blood pressure and high cholesterol?" Right. The very f the, the very best recommendations for that is a plant based diet, exercise, and drinking a lot of water. Let me give you an example. They've been able to find in studies that you get the equivalent, if you drink 15 glasses of water a day, is the equivalent of taking blood pressure medication. Mm -hmm. So you get the same result in the body if you were taking blood pressure medication. Also, uh, also again, but also, here's, here's some of the things that will cause blood pressure to go up. Not drinking enough water. If you don't drink enough water, remember the blood is about 80% 80, 80 water. Right, so when you don't drink enough water, you have less water in the, in the system, the blood thickens as it goes through the arteries, so the pressure goes up and it puts pressures on your, on your arteries. Uh, not getting enough sleep can cause blood pressure to rise. Stress can cause blood pressure to rise. Um, uh, eating, eating badly, that's why I always recommend the plant-based diet. Because what happens, if you get diabetes or high blood pressure, high cholesterol, once you get one, the other two are coming really, really soon. Because the same mechanism in the body that causes one causes the others. So what happens normally when people get hypertension, if they don't change things up, sooner they're going to have also high cholesterol. And then they're going to have diabetes or vice versa. It just depends. They get, whatever they get, they're going to get the other two soon. And so the best thing I've seen for that is, is drinking a lot of water, flipping over to a plant-based diet, exercising in the fresh air and the sunshine, the laws of health. And those are the best. Those are the best. I mean, there's stuff you can, you can add like, like cayenne and garlic and those things. But... Those are the best things that, that I've seen that work. But what if you were told it wasn't, um, it wasn't diet related, it was hereditary related? Now, you know, notice that it says if, if it wasn't diet related, but it was hereditary related. Here's the issue with that, is that let's say you have a, let's say you have a genetic propensity to something, right? Mm -hmm. Right, it doesn't mean that you have to have it. You have, your lifestyle basically turns the switch on. So when you change around, you can turn the switch off again. And so that's what basically it boils, it boils down to. What have you heard of L-arginine? L-arginine, the amino acid? For a specific reason? 
It's um, huh? No, you're thinking of um, L. Larson. Well, L. Arginine. It's a, pretty much all of the uh, 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 all of your uh, amino acids. Pretty much are great. I mean, if you like, they they all do different things in the body, but L. Arginine is one of the one that you one of the more popular ones you hear about. But um, depending on what you're trying to take it for, or who you, you know. Heart related. Well, first I would see if, if I have a, a deficiency of it at, at all. All right. Uh, you know, uh, that's one thing I, w- I wanted to mention that earlier that she just mentioned. I just wanted to mention this is that for just overall heart health and your gum and periodontal health, COQ10. CoQ10? Oh, yeah. Great. For the heart and for the gums, periodontal health. Diva nutrition. Diva nutrition. They have sublingual. I'm gonna tell you the first time. My first experience with CoQ10 was some years ago. I got some sublingual CoQ10. I, I just started, I read. I was doing some reading, and I said, "Oh, it's good for you know periodontal health and the heart." And so I said, "I'm gonna start taking it." And I start taking it, and within like a week. All of my wisdom teeth started coming through. <laughs> they just started coming through. And I'm like, what's going on? And I still take, I still take it. I still take it. But it's very good for your heart. Uh, it's very good for, for periodontal uh, health. And remember, there's a, there's, a very, there's a very close connection between your periodontal health and your heart health, especially for women. Especially for women. Who would have thought that your, your periodontal health would have anything to do with your heart? But remember, it's, it's the concept that we have in natural medicine that you're all, you're all connected. It's not where, that, you're, that you have a headache and it's just my headache, nothing else. Your headache could be being caused because you're constipated. Did you know that? You could be constipated and have a headache because you're constipated. You could have a headache because you're dehydrated. So the, the body is interlocked, interconnected. Uh, I saw another hand. Root canals. Well, some of the some of the research they hypothesize that because that 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 tooth is left in the body and is dead, that bacteria uh, accumulates, and because that dead tooth is in there, that back yeah, that bacteria can get into the system, and that's one of the the hypotheses that I've heard or read rather when I was doing a little research on it from some dentists, even from some of the holistic dentists. And some from the other researchers, that's what they, they hypothesize because they're trying to figure out why so many women, and actually they said that it's normally on the same side that they had the, uh, that they found a lump, it's normally on the same side that they had the, uh, the root canal. So that's kind of troubling. That's kind of troubling. That's pretty much the only thing. Now, one thing I read, rec- I read, I've read recently. They, haven't, they don't really have it here yet, but I, they have it in Europe where what they're using to, like, if they have to pull a tooth, they're using stem cells to regrow the tooth. Because once they, once they pull it, that's it. That's it. <laughs> so. Mm-hmm. So the question she's asking about is about estrogen dominance. And a lot of times, uh, estrogen dominance, if, if you're a female and you're having like um, PMS, an issue like that, that's estrogen dominance. And so, in other words, the progesterone to estrogen level in the body is thrown off. And, and if you have estrogen dominance for a long time, it can actually open you up to developing cancer. So the question is, she's saying, okay, some people say, you know, like with the soy, you know. Uh, the issue with soy is not that it's soy. The issue with it for some people is some of the processing that, that's how it's made. And that's, really, that's the real issue. Is it, because in and of itself, the plant protein, the you know, phytonutrients and whatnot, generally speaking, of course it should be eaten, nothing should be, everything should be eaten in moderation. But with estrogen dominance, uh, you, do have issue, you do have issues where the estrogen is going up here, so that means 
uh, the progesterone is low. It's not up to where the estrogen should be. And so there are a few things that help with that. Um, exercise is one. Consistent exercise actually helps that. There's also, uh, like with flax seeds, if they're raw, and say you uh, basically you can eat flax seed that, that uh, they have they have some estrogen, plant-based estrogens in them. Um, um, there's some also some. Have you ever heard of chaseberry? Chaseberry is is very high in natural progesterone that will also help offset. Uh, also, uh, yellow dock is also yellow dock. Mm -hmm. D o c k. It, it, it also helps bring up the natural progesterone in the body. But that chase berry is one of the best things I've seen that does it. And the flax seeds, I would say that, the flax seeds, chase berry, yellow dock, uh, and those things, uh, a lot of times you see some of those things that they use in these progesterone creams, the natural progesterone cream as opposed to the other ones. Uh, a lot of times you will see that that will help bring up your uh, progesterone level. Uh, and also, as exercise is found, one, is found to be one of the best things to help level off those levels as well. And um, also, I'd like to go back real quick to those simple things that we've been given in the spirit of prophecy to do that I found that our people, over time, we kind of overlook them. Uh, like, for instance, not drinking when you eat. Yes. Right? Yes. They're like, you know, it, another thing is not lying down sooner than five hours. I'm sorry, three hours after you eat. Not eating sooner than five hours in between meals. Not eating between meals. <laughs> so, so think about what's happening. Let's say if I eat, I eat a meal. And I eat and say I start feeling real groggy, right? And I go and I lie down, right? What's going to happen is I'm going to lie down and, and, and those, my internal organs are going to press up against, against that vagus nerve that runs from the brain all the way down to the gastrointestinal tract. That vagus nerve plays a significant role in the digestion of my food. So now, because I've laid down, I'm pressing up against that nerve, my digestion is hindered, right? Now think about it if I'm doing this all of the time. And before you know it, I'm, I'm having problems assimilating my food, and I'm having gastrointestinal problems. And other things are going on. Or I'm, I have uh, some type of nutritional deficiencies. Another thing is, is eating sooner than five hours between Meals. These, all these things are in the spirit of prophecy. Uh, what happens? My, I'm not giving my, my body time enough to break down the food. So I'm eating again, so now my gastrointestinal tract is, is worn out. My, my, um, my, my pancreas gets worn out. A lot of people have diabetes because they don't give their pancreas, they wear out their pancreas by eating all the time. Most of the time, most nutritionists tell us now that you should eat 12 to 15 small meals throughout the day. That is going to wear out your pancreas. Because the, the pancreas needs time to rest. It, it needs a rest. It needs a, it needs a break. And so, um, the, uh, and so now we, we have to, um, uh, the very first thing you should do is to go back to the laws of health. Trust me, we've heard the laws of health so long, but we really kind of like, well, we've heard the laws of health. They, they work. We do them consistently. Because if you think about it, if, you, if your pancreas is being worn out, what, what's the purpose for the pancreas? One of the purposes is it produces what? Insulin, right? Take care of your sugar. Yes, right. And so you want that sugar, you want that sugar rolling around in your, in your bloodstream. Because if it's rolling around in your bloodstream, it's doing damage. Before you know it, you know, uh, you can't see. What's happening there? What's it, you know what that's, you know what that's called? You know what that's called when you, when you go, start going blind from diabetes? Diabetic retinopathy. You said there's a song? Huh? No, I said, does anyone know what it's called when you start going? Right. Did you know that? The number one cause for adult blindness, diabetes. And people, you know, tend to, because so many people get it, we tend to minimize the disease. But it's a diabetes is a serious disease. And yet, it's one of the easiest ones to reverse naturally. 
Yep, it's one of the easiest ones to reverse naturally, but it's a very serious disease. I think I got time for maybe one or two more. Right, Alzheimer's. The very, the very first thing with, with Alzheimer's, as with most diseases, is you have to look at the diet. Also, there's some evidence that uh, aluminum yeah. contributes. You know, I remember when I was in school, they talked about we, how you shouldn't cook in aluminum. Yeah. Because the heat, say you, say you wrap, say you people make things and they wrap whatever it is in aluminum. And then the heat uh, causes the aluminum part, particles of aluminum to seep into the food. And say if you've done this for years and years and years, and it said this aluminum begins to uh, uh, accumulate small parts in the brain, uh, which can also can help contribute to Alzheimer's. There's other things that can help contribute to Alzheimer's as well. If you're, think about if your arteries are getting clogged and you don't have good blood flow, right? Uh, eating things that, that are not healthy for us overall. Because remember, the body does not, is not like in a vacuum. You can't eat something and it just affects one part and not the other part. And so there's some other, there's some other evidence that, that is hypothesizing that Alzheimer's is really type 3 diabetes. Right. Yeah, that's, it's like diabetes of the brain. That's, some, that's what's coming out now. That some of the doctors saying it's really type 3 diabetes. It's, 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 it yep, yep. Also, something else that's, that could be playing out too that that's could be contributing is a lot of people have those, remember those mercury fillings in their mouth? Still, yeah. Yep, and, and a lot of times these things leak. Mm -hmm. uh, and some of those have small parts of aluminum in them as well. So, but mercury, mercury, mercury is, a, is a serious deal too. And the thing about mercury, like say for instance you have mercury in your mouth and you're drinking, let's say you're drinking hot drinks coffee or whatever. Hopefully you're drink, not drinking caffeine. I hope you make, if you're drinking coffee, and a lot, a lot of evidence of drinking coffee, get the natural coffee where you make the beans or whatever, where you, what's it called? The, uh, yeah, the aroma, one of those, those things. Yeah, as opposed to caffeine coffee, because that caffeine is going gonna, is gonna to blow out your adrenals. It's going to deplete your adrenal glands. And a lot of people I deal with are struggling with stress and anxiety, and they're not able to deal with it because your, your adrenal glands are like the shock absorbers in your car. You know how you have some of these nicer cars they have where you hit the bumps and you barely feel it? Because they have those nice shocks. That's what your adrenal glands are there for. They're, help, they're there to help you deal with stress. And what happens is when you stress, you deplete your B-complex vitamin. And a lot of people go into adrenal, uh, uh, adrenal fatigue, adrenal exhaustion, and they can't deal with stress. And it's like, uh, and, and one of the things that contribute to that significantly is caffeine. Caffeine depletes the adrenals. And so that's one of the things, uh, ca caffeine is also carcinogenic, it's cancer causing. And so, um, but I'm out of time. <laughs> I, I, I thank you so much for allowing me to come. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you for allowing me to come. Thank you for being so kind and friendly. Um, and shortly I'm gonna have to go back because I have an elders meeting in a little while <laughs> tonight. But, uh, I thank you so much for this opportunity, for being attentive, for asking so many questions, and for your interest. Amen. Thank you. Amen. All right. Thank you so much for coming this afternoon. Let's stand for closing prayer, shall we? Are you with me, gentlemen? Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we are so blessed that you have already told us how best to protect our health. But Lord, we also recognize we live in a sinful world, and it's good to have understanding of how to handle when bad things happen. We pray for you to bless us, to help us, to use all of this information to help others, that they too may be drawn closer to you and know that you are the God of love. 
and we will give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you again for coming. Have a good afternoon.